Hey everybody, welcome to the Stock Car Spectacle. I'm Ian Jordson. I'm Mike Gamble. And I'm Nick Kinzel. And guys, we are starting off with season five of the Stock Car Spectacle in 2023. Wow. We've been doing this for five years already? Yep. Oh, I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah. Wow, it's flying. It has been a while, but... Guys, we have been up to a lot during this offseason, especially Mr. Gambleman. Yeah, it's been a crazy few months for me. As you guys know, I got married in October, and then December 18th, my wife and I welcomed a beautiful baby girl to the world. So that's been keeping me on my toes the last little while. Um, for all the shows where I maybe haven't been on and may not be on as much in the future, that's what's going on right now. Got some... Uh, some adult responsibilities on deck right now that's been uh, keeping me, we'll just say, more than busy. Yeah, but that's awesome, man. Yeah, Welcome to dad life. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's uh, been a lot of fun. It's been challenging at times, but uh, been it's been enjoyable, that's for sure. Absolutely. So, guys, we're starting off a new season for NASCAR 2023. Let's just start off. What are our expectations Nick, let's start off with you. What's your expectations for 2023? I th So last year, well, we didn't know what was going to happen with the uncertainty of the next-gen car and everything. But now that we got a full year under our belt and drivers kind of know how these cars drive now, I think we're in for a, a really great season. I mean, last year was exciting, and that was just the first year under these uh, new cars. So I just think it's going to be another exciting year. Xfinity's got a stacked field this year. The trucks are always the trucks they put on a wild show. So bring it on. I'm excited. Absolutely. Mike? Yeah, I tend to agree. I think we're going to see um, a really good season this year. You know, I think we already saw an increase in the uh, the competitiveness mm -hmm. in the clash alone. Um, so I think, like like Nick said, I think the cars will be more and more competitive. The teams are going to be more competitive. I think as we go on with more and more time, the top teams are going to start resurging as the top teams again. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also really looking forward to, we're going to have a really fun rookie battle this year. So um, I'll let you talk about that because you're a little more invested in that. <laughs> but that is one of the things I got my eye on this year. Yeah, that's one of the first things I was going to get into was the rookie battle. You got Ty Gibbs and Noah Gregson, the top two drivers from the Xfinity series last year. And it's going to be a fun battle between the two because we saw Ty Gibbs struggles in one of the top equipment cars last year. And Noah Gregson starting off with a new team, Legacy Motor Club. Uh, we don't know what they're capable of right now. So we'll see. Should be a fun battle. And yeah, like you said, Xfinity Series is going to be a whole lot of fun, especially with Cole Custer coming back down. Yeah. I think that's that's the series where he belongs. You take the all guy route. Cup isn't for everybody, but we saw how well he exceeds on in the Xfinity series with those cars. So I think Cole Custer is going to have a great season down there and trucks is going to be as wild as ever with all these new young guns coming up. Yeah, absolutely. Like you guys said earlier, the trucks put on a crazy, uh, crazy show almost every time they're out. Um, when it comes to Cole Custer, whether his goal is to, you know, stay in the Xfinity series long-term, or if he does decide he wants to try to get another crack at the cup series. Mm -hmm. One thing we do know is not everybody has performed well at Stuart Haas racing, especially in that car that he's been in the 41. Um, we've seen guys like Daniel Suarez go on to have career resurgence as Kurt Busch won races after being in the 41. So mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to go ahead and close the book on Cole Custer quite yet, but I do think coming down to the Xfinity series, winning a bunch of races and probably being a contender for the championship is what he needs to do. If he wants to get back to racing on Sundays instead of Saturdays. Yeah, definitely. So guys can't wait for the season to start. We got cars on track on Wednesday when they begin qualifying for the duels. I'm so excited. But before we dig into all that, let's start off with our first die cast of the week. Mr. Nick, what you got for us, buddy? Come on now. It's Daytona 500 week. What car do you think I'm going to play? Uh, it's the same car that I always play, Daytona 500 week. It is the the greatest race car of all time, but it's missing a piece. It's missing the spoiler. The spoiler broke off, uh, but it. <laughs> I have the piece over there, so I might have to have your dad hot glue gun it or something, Ian, because, yeah. Bring it over Sunday. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, of course. 2011 uh, Trevor Bain Daytona 500 race win. Trevor Bain, uh, this is the second Cup Series race. You know the story. Told it a million times. This is the first NASCAR race that I ever watched 
And that that was the day I became a Bane fan. That's the day I became a NASCAR fan. So this win, this car will always have a special meaning to me because without this, Trevor Bain didn't win the Daytona 500. I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking about NASCAR with you guys right now. Yeah, who knows? Or you might be a Bobby Labonte fan. Who knows? <laughs> oh, man, I don't think I'd be watching anymore if I was a Bobby Labonte fan. <laughs> yeah, I'd say you were probably about 10 years too late if that was. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mikey G, what you got, buddy? All right, guys. In anticipation of Nick playing that car, because I always play, or I play that car sometimes, and I knew damn well he was going to play it. <laughs> I went a little different route. I went with the Bubba Wallace 43 Aftershocks car that he ran the 2019 Daytona 500. This one is autographed. I did have a get it uh, autographed by Bubba, and I got the matching pit crew on this shirt. Um, not Bubba's best run in the, the 500, but, you know, I don't have all my die cast. I'm kind of running out of 500 cars. So uh, look what I got, all right? <laughs> yeah, you got a good one too. <laughs> At least it was a cool looking car. Whatever the rest is, what it is, good looking car. I'll yeah, tell you that much. Absolutely. All right. So for my die cast of the week, they just announced that Noah Gregson will be running a Wendy's paint scheme for the Daytona 500. So got to throw it back to his 2022 Wendy's paint scheme that he ran at Talladega that we were all at. We saw yep. for your bachelor party. That was awesome. Beautiful car. And uh can't wait for the 42 Wendy's car to hit the track on Wednesday. So that awesome partnership with uh, Noah Gregson with Wendy's. Dude, they got me. I saw the car. I went out and uh, I had to have Wendy's for lunch. Oh, yeah? All right. <laughs> got Yep. So, guys, let's get into everything. Some big news that came out. I just said it. Noah Gregson, he's going to have Wendy's on his car for the Daytona 500. Uh, Corey LaJoy, he announced that he's going to be doing some truck races with Spire Motorsports, helping them out on the truck series side. His first stint will be at Daytona. Uh, pretty cool to see Shu kind of expand his horizons um and help out spire and you know we always see cup guys they'll run like xfinity or truck races for the daytona 500 week kind of get some practice yeah and like you said it, it you know Corey's a guy that a lot of people think very highly of in the garage doesn't always end up in the uh the most advantageous situations when it comes to being on uh you know big teams or teams that have a, the chance to win races week in and week out so Coming down to a series like the uh, the truck series, you know, maybe going out there to win a couple races. I think he's pretty pretty sound in his seat at Spire over there now. Um, but mm -hmm. at the same time, he goes out and he runs well. You don't know what other doors you unlock. And, uh, you know, sometimes guys just need a little confidence boost to being back in victory lane or run, just running well to begin with. So. Yeah. I think that's going to be great for Corey. And then uh, we got tricked. Kyle Busch told us a couple years ago that he was done Xfinity racing. We thought we saw the end of it at Atlanta when he took out your boy, Daniel Hemrick. But nope, we are cursed to see Kyle Busch do more Xfinity races with Colic Racing in that 10 car. And his first race will be at Vegas. Yeah, I look at this in two ways. Obviously, I'm not happy that Kyle Busch is going to run five Xfinity races this year because that's going to be five Xfinity races that I... Uh, but here's how I look at it. It's a good way is I think Kyle Busch is going to come into college racing and he's going to step up their Xfinity series program. Cause last year they kind of struggled a little bit. Uh, AJ Allmendinger, he was kind of, he's kind of class of the show in that class of the field in that 16 car. Um, and Daniel Hemrick and Landon Castle, they kind of struggled a little bit. So with equipment wise. So I, I look at this as kind of a positive because I think he's just going to come in and Kyle Busch is just going to give it to you straight up. He, if the cars suck, he's going to let you know. And I think it's just going to make their, their cars better. So I look at that as a little bit of a positive note for Daniel Hemrick. A little the bit, car but remember year. last time when they were teammates, didn't really work out well. <laughs> We I mean, yeah, yeah, you, can say, you can say that, but I'm looking at more for for him to make these cars go faster. So I'm not miserable uh, in the Xfinity series again <laughs> this year as I was last season. Yeah, Another I'll take that. I, I, go ahead. I'll, I'll take that too with uh with Kyle and Daniel being teammates again, because at least if he's going to wreck me, that means I'm going to be at the front of the field on. Unlike last year where I was in, in the mid-pack of the field. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll take it. And maybe Daniel can give him one back this year. Who knows? Yeah, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
Well, another thing I'm looking at too, um, we've come off what two years in a row now with really strong expanded fields as mm-hmm. far as uh, well, maybe three years, a couple years ago when you had Custer, Christopher Bell, Tyler Reddick, that group. Yeah. Um, then the last two years we've watched Ty Gibbs and uh Noah Gregson, and those guys are gone. Um the Xfinity series could use a headline. You know, I'm not knocking the the remaining people in the Xfinity field by any stretch of the imagination, but Kyle Bush coming down there might not be the worst thing for the Xfinity series. You know, um, you know, racing sometimes can be a little peak and valley. And I think it's, you know, those are guys that were very high profile, big name, you know, like next up and comers of the, the, the cup series. So everybody mm-hmm. wanted to watch them race on Saturdays. I don't know if we quite have the same quantity of those guys in the field this year. So a guy like Kyle Busch coming down at least for five races might bring a couple more, a uh, couple more eyeballs in series. Yeah. And the drivers, you know, the, the full-time Xfinity drivers, they love it when guys like Kyle Busch are in the field because they get that experience of what it's like to race against a full-time cup series driver. I mean, look at the race uh, with Darlington and mm-hmm. uh, with Chase Briscoe and Kyle Busch. That was one of the best finishes of a race I've ever seen. And Chase Briscoe went wall to wall with a cup series champion and, absolutely killed it beat him it was awesome and parker kligerman when uh he quote tweeted when uh bob pockers announced that kyle bush is gonna be running with Kyle, like he was like all right i get the run with kyle again in the xfinity series yeah. i get the you know they want to learn off of him so i think that's great five races is perfect you know you don't want them stealing the yeah. whole season away like they right. used to but no, I, I think that's good you know like you said nick get more eyeballs on the sport right. too you know just like you know Dale Jr. He'll run like one or two races a year or something with his team. So yeah. it's good to get more eyes on the Xfinity series because it's, it, it proves it year after year that it's the best series in NASCAR. Yeah. Well, and like Nick said too, I mean, it's not like he's coming down and running in the, uh, the Joe Gibbs Xfinity equipment where it's going to be like, all right, let's see how many laps he leads and wins by today. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Kyle Busch. So there's no reason to think he isn't going to come down here and do really well, but there's still a little bit of a question mark because like Nick said, this hasn't been the best equipment outside of the Almondinger car mm-hmm. the last couple of years. So um, that's a story in and of itself. So I think that also makes a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. So it should be interesting to see Kyle Busch with a challenge ahead of him. So guys, let's get into our Daytona preview. We start off the week with the truck series. We got the next era energy 250, 250 mile race stages. One and two are 20 laps each. And the final is 60 for a total of 100 laps. Last year's winner was Zane Smith. Uh, some notables in this race. I mentioned him. Corey the joy. He'll be in the seven for Spire. Chase Elliott. He's going to be in the 35 for uh, McAnally. Hilgeman Racing, <laughs> okay, and then Travis Pastrana, he'll be in the All right. for Nice. <laughs> Can't wait to see him tear it up down there. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Parker Kligerman, he'll be in the 75 for Henderson Motorsports. So, guys, another truck season is ahead of us. Let's make our first pick of the season. Our truck series guy, start off with you, Mikey. The trucks, there's there's no saying what's ever going to happen <laughs> in this Daytona race. I mean, your pick's as good as mine. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy walking his dog, listen to our podcasts, whenever this happens to come out, guess is as good as any of ours. I mean, we've seen it time and time again. There's going to be 400 cautions, five red flags, and this is going to be a three-hour race turned into a six-hour affair. Um just for that, I always seem to uh, lean towards the uh, the experience there um, with the guy coming down like that. I'm going to go with Chase Elliott to win this thing. He, he's won on super speedways before. Um, you know what? I think he's going to have the acumen to kind of stay out of the, the nonsense that we know is inevitably coming. So uh, I'm not going to make this big, bold, flashy prediction or be the homer and pick, uh, take my boy Ben Rhodes. I'm going to go with Chase Elliott. All right. Not a bad pick. Nick, who you got, buddy? Yeah, like Mike said, the truck series at Daytona, it's always a crapshoot. I remember a couple years ago when Austin Hill won the race, there was like maybe six or seven trucks that wound up finishing that race. You just never know what's going to happen. I'd like to say that experience plays well here. At um, Like Mike said, he's taking Chase Elliott. I'm going to take Parker Klingerman. Uh, he's a guy, He's he's been here multiple times before. I just don't see one of these young guys without – 
without some miracle happening, without tearing someone else's shit up, which could very well happen. Trucks at Daytona. In the end, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my boy Parker Klingerman. Open up uh, the truck series season with a dub. All right. I like it. And I am kind of going off of you guys with the experience. I'm going to go with Corey LaJoy. We've seen he's been pretty good on these super speedways. Almost won Atlanta last year before Chase Elliott took him out. Uh, He's (laughs) been in the uh, front of the pack at Daytona and Talladega before. So I think with the truck series, I think he's, you know, yeah, th- he's only running a couple races, so he doesn't really have much to lose. So just go for it. And I think, I think he can do it. So give me old shoe. I love that pick. He, like you said, he's one of those like dark horse guys mm-hmm. for most of the super speedway races we run. Um, like you said, you put him down in this series. I love that. Pick. Oh yeah. I love that pick. Absolutely. I will say it's a damn shame that Jordan Anderson isn't going to run a truck this year at Daytona. Yeah. Two yeah. seasons at, at Daytona. He, he's been right there. So that would have been yeah. cool to see him. Didn't get, he, get I think he got second it. place. Like what? Like not, two years ago. Yeah. I think it was two years ago. He got two second. years ago. And then he finished pretty, uh, he finished up front last year too. I believe. Yeah. He's a good, he's a good one for that. Yeah, yeah I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think know his if team he's is running not anymore, racing though. right now because of his injuries from the yeah. truck fire. But yeah, probably good to just kind of stay out of it and have other guys run your truck. And I, I, I wonder Are if they? he's still running his Xfinity team this year. I haven't really looked into that. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, but either way, yeah, he is one that's gonna suck not being able to watch him run at Daytona because yeah, he always runs up front. But let's get into the Xfinity race. This is always my favorite name for a race. Beef is what's for dinner. <laughs> 300. I, I love that name so much. 300 mile race. Stages one and two are 30 laps each. And the final is 60 for a total of 120 laps. Last year's winner was Austin Hill. We know he is the super speedway guy in the Xfinity series right now. Um, and really the only notable that I saw that was entering into this race was Justin Haley. He's going to be in the 10 for college racing. Nick's favorite. Yeah, Nick's favorite driver. But guys, we know how Justin Haley is on the super speedways, especially in the Xfinity series yeah. and college just kicks ass every year. So Nick, how is <laughs> Daniel Hemrick going to help his teammate? <laughs> <with the victory laughs> well, first of all, shut up. Uh, second <laughs> Second of all, no, my pick is going to come from the college camp. I just think that we talk about these guys every time we're on a super speedway. Uh, they just work together. There's just something about it where Chris Rice and Matt Cog, they just they got these guys bought in to, to work together as one team, one family. I want to see the 11 car get a little bit selfish this year. I don't want to see him push that fucking 10 car to, to the win. Um, so I, I'm going to take. I'm going to take Daniel Hemmer because last year, let's remember last year in this race, sat on the pole, won the first two stages, had a bad pit stop, sent to the back, race over, fucked. Uh, yeah. Let's not let's not do that again this year. But, no, it just comes down to how Colleg uh, maneuvers these super speedways. And they just work together. I expect all – what do they run – what do they got, four cars in this race on Saturday? I expect all four cars to be up front, all three or four cars to be up front on Saturday, contending for this win, and I'm hoping the 11 comes out on top. All right. And I hope the 10 ends up in the catch fence. So that's cool. All right, Mike, who you got? And be respectful. All right. right. (laughs) I'm going to go a little out of left field here. All right. So there's one driver that gets a goofy win every year. The same driver has got a little extra motivation because he's going to a new team this year. Gross. This same driver, I think, (laughs) has more talent than he's been allowed to show. And this same driver is going to make Ian hate me right now. I'm going with Brandon Jones. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I mean, again, I think he's more talented than what we've seen. I think the change of scenery is going to do him wonders. Mm -hmm. Um. I think after the the Ty Gibbs situation at the end of last season it has him a little more extra motivated than normal to go out there and succeed this year as well. So uh, I think we're going to see a different Brandon Jones this year. And uh, again, it is a super speedway race. Anything can happen. He hasn't been terrible at these races in his career. Um, yeah, I think he's I, that's my I think I'm gonna go with the nine here. I've been hard on Brandon Jones. 
He still needs to unblock me on Twitter. But <laughs> <laughs> I I think this is his last shot to actually prove himself that he belongs in a series and he's a winner. I think if, this is pro- this is the top ride next to the 54 or 18 or whatever the hell you want to call it over at Joe Gibbs Racing. But this is the top ride in the Xfinity series, and he needs to own it. He needs to do, you know, at least do half of what Noah did last year. And when he needs to do, th- he needs to get like three wins, at least two wins. And he can prove himself that he's not just like a one off every year that he gets a lucky win. But that's how half of his wins are is by luck. So, yeah, he needs to prove himself. And this is his shot. So I'm rooting for him. I like junior motorsports. I want to see him do well. I think this is an opportunity for him to to finally just kind of be comfortable with where he's at. I mean, look at it. he's driven that 19 car for JGR and yeah, it's Joe Gibbs racing, but you can you can tell there there is an equipment difference throughout those rides there. The 18 was miles better than than the 19 last year and I don't know. So I think this is a true chance. Dale Earnhardt Jr., you know, he loves this kid. Uh, so I, I just think that this is the finally the right fit for Brandon Jones. And I think he might surprise some people this year because I, I agree with Mike. I think that he hasn't been able to display his his full talent level yet. And I think with this nine car, with what Noah was able to do with it and his time there, I just think this is a good opportunity for him. But I will say the pressure is definitely on him this year. This he's got to go out and get it done. But I would not be surprised if he did if he exceeds the expectations this season and starts to run up front more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we will see this year. So my pick is gonna shock the hell out of you guys. So yeah, we're Ryan gonna Vargas. See... Huh? <laughs> Ryan Vargas. <laughs> that's if he has a ride i think he's running truck series like part-time this year he's, he's running with my boy he's running with mikey Harmon. what are you talking about <laughs> oh, oh yeah that's gonna go great <laughs> so yeah we're gonna see a lot of guys showcasing their talent on saturday but that just means we're gonna see rex on rex on rex we got a lot of talented guys that are gonna be making a lot of stupid moves and i think we're gonna see someone who has not gotten an xfinity series win and I hate to say it too, but I do think that the number 98 of Riley Herbst is going to get his first win <laughs> on Saturday. That's how it's going to happen. There's going to be like five cars left in the field and he's going to get it. I think that's what's, I think it's going to be carnage on Saturday. I just have one objection to that pick. If you're proclaiming we're going to get all these wrecks and all these moves, you're not predicting he's going to be the catalyst. Yeah, how is he not gonna I think he's going to make it out. Of them. I don't know about I'm, that. I'm taking a gamble. I got oh. Riley Herbs to win it on Saturday. That's disgusting. We'll, <laughs> we'll run it back next week when I'm right, all right? <laughs> all right? All right. All right, guys. So let's get into the big show, the Daytona 500. 500 miles, stages one and two are 65 laps each, and the final is 70 for a total of 200 laps. Last year's winner was Austin Sindrick in the mayhem at the end. So, guys... We got a big show on Sunday, and I got I got to go with my boy Noah Gregson. He's been he did great in the Daytona 500 last year in that 62 ride. Got a full time ride with the 42. Let's go! I think he's going to go in victory lane. Mike, all right, who you got? Well, we know when it comes to the Daytona 500, and anytime we're at a super speedway race, it always comes down to the team orders and the manufacturers working together. Um, there's still more Fords than anybody else in the field, so I'm always going to go with the Ford. Um, and you know what? I think, uh, we're going to see somebody go out there and start the season off with a big old statement coming off of winning a championship. I think Joey Logano goes out there and wins a Daytona 500. Oh, that would be, that's just, really going to start off the season with a true X and Logano win, man. <laughs> I mean, it's going yeah. to be one of those years, huh? <laughs> well, like, like I was saying, um, previously about Joey Logano, you could say what you'd want about the guy whether he's two-faced, whether he's a snake. But you know what? The guy wins. The guy's talented. However he got there, whether it was, you know, daddy's money or not, um, you can say what you want when it comes to that stuff. The guy finds a way to win. Every time we go to a new track, he finds a way to win. Um, I This guy just wins. That's just at the end of it. So, you know what? When it comes to a race like this, um, especially if you, we're picking guys who are going to be put in a position to wreck or win, I think we know what he's going to do. So, uh, yeah, I like the 22. Dude, he'll wreck his mama for a win. Exactly. Yep. 
<laughs> All right. So for my pick, I'm going to go with a guy who the past couple years in this race has come oh so close, oh so many times. It's out of the Toyota camp. I'm going with driver 23. Bubba Wallace is finally going to win himself at Daytona 500. He's come so close so many times with those runner-up finishes, and this place finally owes him one, and I think that this is going to be the year to do it. We saw how how Bubba finished off that 2022 season. He would, he kicked ass towards the end of the year, so what better way to keep that momentum rolling into 2023 than driver 23 going to victory lane at Daytona 500? Give me Bubba Wallace. I would just love to hear the NASCAR's rig. Oh, yes. Because yeah. they're racist uh, crowd. Oh, yes. Minds on social media. Hey, <laughs> really fantastic. Driver's got to follow the script, all right? Yeah, yeah that's, right. that's the script, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think that would be great. You know, he, he has done so well in this race. Uh, his first ever Daytona 500. He came in second place to, uh, who was it? That was Austin Dillon that won it that year, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then Denny was trying to put him in the wall. Yeah. He made the Adderall comment. And now he drives for driving for him. Yeah. Now he drives <laughs> for him. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And I, another prediction I think I'm going to make for this year is I think Tyler Reddick is just going to, he's going to start off hot. Yeah, I think he's just going to kick ass to begin with. We saw how well that 45 was last year with Kurt and Bubba both driving that car. So, and we saw how well Tyler Reddick was doing in that eight car. So, yeah, I think he is yeah. going to start off hot and win. I, I think by the end of the season, I think he'll probably have five, six wins, uh, throw in a couple road courses in there too, because he's a new road course king. He gives Chase Elliott a run for his money. I love that. Yeah, if we're starting to make some predictions for the year, I think 2311 is going to be a, a very, very good team this mm-hmm. year. Um, like you've spoken pretty at length there about Tyler Reddick. You look back to Bubba Wallace's season last year too. The second half of that year on, he was much better. Um, he ran inside the top 10, won a race, mm-hmm. led laps, um, was always in position. He was in position to run very well and finish maybe in the top handful in the clash until uh, – some punk with a mustache decided that he ran out of talent once again. Uh, he seemed to do that quite a bit, if we're being honest. So, uh, but um, yeah, so I, I think Bubba's going to have a good year. Um, as long as they, you know, they really did a good job in the second half of the year to clean up the pit road mistakes. As yeah. long as they can keep that going, um, I think 2311 should be a very strong team this year. And I'm ex- I'm excited to see what comes out of RCR this year, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Kyle Bush going over there, that could. I could see it being a year of transition. I could see him just going there and hitting the ground running and winning four or five races there. I like I like his chances because I look at how Tyler Reddick ran that race car uh, last season. He was very fast, in position to win races. And then you just add the talent. Not to say Tyler Reddick isn't a great talent. Then you just add the talent of Kyle Busch and what his knowledge is and what he's going to bring over, what he's going to tell these guys about these race cars. Uh, it's going to be exciting, but it, yeah, it could go one of two ways. He, he could, I think he's going to struggle for the first couple of races as he still gets acclimated to, to driving with this team, but let him get five to six races under his belt. And then Rowdy's going to come out to play and he's going to make our lives hell on Sundays. That's, yeah, that's Pop, what I'm going really going to see how much yes. his grandson sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, no disrespect to Austin Dillon. You're a cool guy, but eh. yeah, he's got a little Joey Logano thing going on. Real nice guy in real life. Uh, don't always care for uh, what he drives a race. Car. Uh, here's the thing, though: Joey Logano can win races. Austin Dillon can't. That that yeah, that that, that, that is that. There. That is another. <laughs> Austin Dillon will get his lucky win every two, three years. That seems to be his thing now. So yeah, and you know the one thing I think is funny is you know he was such a big part of the recruiting pitch to get Kyle Bush to uh to RCR so it's like a kind of careful what you wish for there bud <laughs> yeah because we're gonna so, see the eight car finishing top three a bunch of times and yeah, he's still three is gonna be yeah he's gonna be struggling for top 15 so yeah it's gonna be fun to see uh how hot and cold RCR will be <laughs> <laughs> but guys we're about at the end of our show. You guys got anything else to add before the season kicks off this weekend? I'm just ready to get back going again. Uh, it's been 
The offseason seemed to have gone by pretty quickly, but now that we're we're just days away from from cars back on track again, and we're getting back into the gist of things, I'm excited. I'm ready for the season to kick ass, and then, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I mean, um, I was telling Ian off camera before we started, um, you know, with everything I've had going on, I haven't really kind of had time to even think about NASCAR in the last few months here. Um, now that we're here filming the show, talking about racing again, it's kind of starting to feel real and uh, starting to get excited to watch uh, watch everything from Wednesday on through the rest of the weekend here, get the season going. And uh, we'll see. I think we're in for an exciting season. I think um, this is going to be the last season with the status quo. We're already starting to hear rumblings, uh, changes with schedules and things like that. Yep. Um, so I think uh, – if NASCAR knows what's good for them, this they'll make sure this is a crazy fun season, akin to what we had last year with all the crazy, uh, crazy finishes, bunch of different winners. Um, I think this could be another just insane NASCAR season from beginning to end. Yeah, one prediction I was gonna make is we had 19 different winners last year with this new car, and now guys are more used to this car. How many more winners are we gonna see this year? I'm excited, especially with the two rookies that are coming up too, that we know that they can fight for a win. I think it's going to be a fun, fun season to watch. I can't wait. Yeah. Another thing, like you said too, the rookie battle, rookie of the year, this is going to be a year where it's going to be it's something like, we really have to talk about. It's, it's not going to be worth watching. Conclusion. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, last year now known as legacy motor club last year was, you know, um, petty, uh, petty GMS. GMS. Races. <laughs> I had a brain fart there for a second. Um, and, you know, Eric Jones was fast last year. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, there's positive signs to be said for that car. Um, now you add in another investor and the uh, the tutelage of one of the best to ever sit in a race car and Jimmy Johnson on that team, too. Who knows what happens there? I, I think they'll be competitive. Um, you know, Ty Gibbs is at Joe Gibbs Motorsports now. So um, we know that car is going to be one of the best cars on the grid every week. It's just a matter of what the the young man can do with it. So when he's proved he's a talented race car driver, let's see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. So guys, that will wrap it up for our show here at the Stock Car Spectacle. Thanks for joining us for our first show of the year. Guys, if you haven't yet, make sure to like our video and subscribe to our channel, and you can find us on Twitter and Instagram as well. So that'll wrap it up for us. I'm Ian Jortson. I'm Mike Gamble. And I'm Nick Kinzel. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.